Hey everybody, registration is now open for our seventh annual summit. Is that right, Peter, our seventh? Seventh. That's yes. crazy. That so correct. this time at the beautiful JW Marriott Camelback at Scottsdale, Arizona, you can immerse yourself in innovation, inspiration, unite your team, which is most important, and at the same time, earn 16 CE credits. That's crazy. Renew your practice, transform your life, June 14th and 15th, registration's now open. Don't delay. These things always sell out. This one will as well. Go to bulletproofsummit.com. Two days that will redefine your practice life. We guarantee it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode with the Bulletproof guys. It's just me and Craig. And uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I get a question about a lot. Actually, Craig, you probably even get a question about this, even though you're the, the non-technical partner of Bulletproof as the dental whisperer, you probably even get this. And it's something it, we talk about commonly in our mastermind, and that is the concept of SEO. And if you listen to the pod for long enough, you know that I always... Um, we well, are the I technical have a expert. You're the technical expert. Well, I, I am an expert, and I'll give you the background of why. But okay, so yes, when I was starting up on my come up, I always tell people that I had way more time than money. And so I would work an eight-hour dental day, and then I would go home and sit with my dogs and learn about SEO. And this is circa 2002 and three, and learn about marketing because I knew one day I would have my practice, right? I was building for the skills that, that I knew I would need for the practice, right? What gets you there isn't what, what got you here isn't what's gonna get you there kind of thing. And so back then I was learning. And back then, guys, you can probably remember, Leo, you've probably been in the space a long time, but you probably remember that you could gamify things and you could add, you know, there was black hat techniques where you could, you know, spool up stuff and get a ton of links. And Google evolved as well along the way. And SEO has gotten to be more and more sophisticated, uh, mainly from a perspective of trying to make sure that the user experience is optimized on their platform, right? They, they identified in every algorithm update that like, oh, that's a spammy technique. We found that and they would penalize you. So that being said, I learned SEO and became very proficient at it way back when. Um, not as proficient now because I have you guys, but uh, became very proficient at it because like I said, I, I had to learn it because I didn't have the money to kind of mess around, right? I didn't have the money to just throw at vendors and say, hey, see what, see what we get here. Put a pin in that for one second. The other yeah. caveat I have is with dentistry as a whole. I don't know if you guys know this, but our industry as, as dentists are the most preyed upon, I feel, uh, from an industry from outside vendors, meaning SEO, we get taken advantage of a tremendous amount. Marketing, we get taken care of a tremendous amount. Life insurance, we get taken a, a tremendous amount. Financial very, services. Very, what, what's that? Fi financial services. Financial services. There's just a host of things because at the at the core, guys, most people, most dentists just want to do dentistry, treat people well, lead a good team and go home, right? If we like you, we kind of say, oh, you're a good guy. And unfortunately, with SEO, I always in encourage people to learn a little bit about it so that you can arm yourself with the knowledge to have an intelligent conversation about the results. If you don't know what you're expecting, how can you qualify your results? And therefore, that's where we get preyed upon. So in the mastermind, I always tell people, learn a little bit about it so, so that you know how to qualify your result. Otherwise, you will accept anything as a result, right? And you're almost too, and, and, and I see a lot of dentists, this happens with a lot of dentists, is they're so afraid to ask or, or, or ask questions about how we're doing because A, they don't know that much about it and they've completely delegated the service or B, they can't turn it off because they're afraid that, holy shit, what if this is where all of my new patients are coming from? And if I turn it off, meanwhile, from Shady Marketer, this is a marketing wet dream because now you have a client that's on subscription that you don't have asking you questions, right? And then you just get them in perpetuity month over month over month over month without having them ask for results. And so this, unfortunately, is where I feel we get taken advantage of. I'm almost done with my opening monologue. <laughs> enter you guys this is this is the context enter you guys for years and years guys i had i had tried to hire seo people and left them because i realized that they that either their tactics were faulty or i unfortunately knew more than they did and they were putting themselves out as quote unquote the seo expert so unfortunately i have kissed a lot of seo frogs in my life um and i and ultimately guys got so frustrated with contractors 
that I just said, you know what, it's, I'm just destined to kind of do this myself. Um, so then when I launched my new website, I, I reached out to you guys because I, I was looking at online and doing copious amounts of research and this time doing my diligence on looking at reviews and what people were saying about you guys had an interview and asked hard questions because, because when I launched this new website, my traffic kind of plummeted because it was, you know, that's a whole different story, but things were, things were not structured the same way as my previous website, even though from a code perspective, it was a better user experience. There were some things that were just messed up. And so anyway, you guys have now, I, I'm proud to report that, uh, that my traffic has now resumed even better than what it was pre old website. And, um, and honestly, I can, I can say this wholeheartedly. I could not have gotten there without you guys because I don't, you know, you just don't know what you don't know. And, and, you know, you do this all day, every day, you guys do this all day, every day. And, um, yeah. I, I mean, Craig, do you have anything to open? Yeah. Craig, you now use. Yeah. So, so let me just cut you, Peter. And well, I let me just... introduce first. Sorry. Well, Craig. Well, no, we can introduce in a second. Okay. Uh, one second. I just want to, and, and thanks for your patience, guys. So I want to be a spoiler alert here for those that are listening, because there's two there's two different approaches here. There's the Bolden approach and the Stoic approach. And somewhere <laughs> in the middle, I think most of our li listeners are intersecting. So Peter, I, I, I hear him get excited about very few things. And one area he's never been excited about is SEO. He's like, it's all sucks. You know, you can never get ahead. And so I just like Peter, since I don't have a, an understanding of it, I'm just like, I've just been slipping and slipping and slipping in my, in my traffic, my organic traffic has been slowly going to the right and down, you know, down into the right over time. And it's Peter, when he finally met you guys, he's like, I think I have something. And I said, okay, well, do your due diligence. Let me know when he's like, and then it got more and more optimistic over weeks and months. He's like, dude, I've got it. You are going to freaking thank me. And I, I don't know anything. I don't want to learn how to make a freaking chocolate cake. I just want to eat chocolate cake. So while you guys go over the next hour or whatever, we got to 30 minutes of, of really the granular specifics. The point I want to make is that this was like the single best move I ever made. And I'm so thankful to you guys because Peter just texted me today. I don't even know how to find the information, but he texted me a graph. Look at your traffic. And I, I mean, I, we should really pull that up, Peter, just for me alone. And my mm -hmm. initial comments were like, hey, this is great. We're going to do a podcast. But like, okay, should I geo limit the, the, their ability to work <laughs> with other people? Because like, <laughs> listen, in my community, and I love it, we give everything away at Bulletproof. But this is such a secret weapon. This is like the freaking Manhattan Project. I don't <laughs> want, I don't, this is a race. This is Oppenheimer. I don't want to race to give it's an arms account. race yeah it's an arms race and i don't want i got a drone i got a fully functional weapons drone here i don't want anybody to have it so let's put a pin in that and and peter go to the introduction and then there's a couple things i want to circle back and obviously we'll go down and learn how to make chocolate cake together yeah so anyway zach leo welcome to the team um or welcome to the pod i should say i know you guys are the the dental seo boost team and uh excited to have you guys on here and what we're going to talk about too uh, you know it's imperative that when people come on the podcast, we're not just having a pamphlet of what people do. I said, come with, I want you to tell our users and listeners the three things they need to know this year for SEO, because as we know, it's a moving target. I mean, you guys know that better than anybody, uh, but Craig, SEO is always changing, just so you know. And, and so, SEO, just so I'm clear, stands for significant entrepreneur. What, what is it I always forget? Significant Entrepreneur Outstanding Results. Huh, oh, I love there that. That's the there one. Yeah. So I'm, still, oh I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still caught up in whether I'm being a uh, prince because, you know, doc, uh, Dr. Bolden's <laughs> kissing frogs and turning us into No, I see. They're the prince. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, you're Oppenheimer. Blowing it up. <laughs> yeah, I think the, 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 the analogy that you're Oppenheimer. I didn't see the movie, but I know he's a badass. So anyway, Peter, introduce <laughs> these two uh, talking heads that we have here. Yeah. So you guys came and spoke to our mastermind. I know some people have engaged. Uh, Craig, I think they'll give you that exclusivity because as we dentists, that's our warm, fuzzy language. Hey, work with me, but not my, not my guy across the street. Well, not for we this. Come on. Like, you can save some money on credit cards, but like, come on. I need, I need some competitive advantage here. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, so anyway, guys. Um, you can quickly intro yourself. We're going to keep this pod pithy, but I really want to get to the meat of it, of, of really what, what our listeners can and should be aware of or could do on their own. Um, 
because a lot of listeners yeah. obviously have their own website. They're in charge of their practices and, and marketing is, uh, is something that interests a lot of Bulletproof listeners. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for the awesome introduction. And I'll just do a quick intro to us and we'll hop right into it. You all are going to hear some exciting stuff. As they said, SEO is always changing. We have AI, all, all sorts of fun stuff we're going to discuss that can bring a ton of Ooh, value. AI. To you hear that, Craig? You hear that, Craig? Yeah. Alan, I'm a huge fan of Alan Iverson, Absolutely. so I'm all in. Absolutely. <laughs> He's the man. So killer crossover, right? Okay, so Leo and I have been doing SEO for 15 plus years combined. Um, Leo masterminded our SEO optimized sites, generated over 10 million organic traffic for our own personal sites, uh, over like millions in revenue. And we were out of the game for a bit, but then we hopped back into the game and we're like, we, we just want to do SEO for ourselves, right? And we're like, well, maybe we can do it to help others as well. Because part of our desire is to help people who help people, like influencers, people who bring a lot of value to others. We want to help them expand their reach. So a um, little over a year ago, we got back into it. We helped a lot of clients and majority of our clients saw anywhere from a 2x to 5x increase in organic traffic after working with us anywhere from six to nine, 10, 11 months. And so we're like, yeah. Like we know that we can create results like now, current day, right? Not the old black hat stuff you were talking about, um, Dr. Bolton, with um, yeah. all these backlinks and keyword stuffing and all this, right? Like we, we can actually do it white hat, organic, the right way. And we still grow regardless of how many updates Google comes out with. So uh, without further ado, like Leo's the mastermind behind all of it. Um, I help him. I support him with fulfillment when needed. You know, I... I and front facing with our clients. But Leo really is the mastermind behind everything that's happening in the SEO space. And there are tremendous changes for 2024. And I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. I'm going to um, let Leo hop right into it. And he can nope. share with you all how you can create amazing results with SEO for your sites. And then just to tone down all the pressure here, uh, going, well, and, and Zach has nine kids. So there you go. True. Uh, dying kids. Kids. Is true? Exactly. It's like, whoa. Yes, he does. Nine he does kids. Wow. God bless you. <laughs> See? There Thank you. you. It's such yeah. a good, easy, like, we can blow it out of the water. And then I turn around and say that. And they're like, wow. We Zach, all Zach what are the age ranges? I won't take us on a tangent. What are the <laughs> yeah, age yeah. ranges? The oldest is 20. He gets married this year. The youngest is almost a turn two. She just started walking about a week ago. Oh my <laughs> word! This is incredible. Yep. So, uh, can I take a, a random stab in the dark? Are you a, a religious or spiritual L person? LDS. Um, I, I, I say more spiritual, not Catholic, not LDS. And no, no, don't... we don't need specifics. But do you have no, a spiritual yeah. identity? Because uh, you yeah. need to pray a lot when you have that many children. A absolutely, <laughs> and, um, and I really have no idea what caused it all. So, if you guys can film, oh, me no, I can, I can tell you. So, so, yeah. so, Leo, take a small break. So, what happens, right. Zach, when a man loves a woman? <laughs> the birds and the bees, baby. Let's get into gotcha. it. <laughs> Listen, See? birds and bees. It's going to make it into the title, Peter. Before we get for all the ADD listeners, uh, Zach and Leo, uh, the company, Peter. The name, I forgot it already. I, I use it. What's the company? Dentalseoboost.com. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. But <laughs> for, for the ADD people that are on their way to work, we've had all this content. We know Zach has nine kids. I just want to know, where do I buy the chocolate cake? Where do I buy the chocolate cake? I know there's flour and there's eggs and there's nine kids and the Oppenheimer. I'm freaking, I just want to, so can I leave now? <laughs> Craig wants to leave. He's like, I'm good. Just show me, show me. Yeah, all right. I mean, all Pete... ties in all the way around because you know, we're talking about all the fun. We like that fun, by the way. In case you Craig waits for my raving endorsement. Then he's like, "That's that was my <laughs> well, due look, diligence. Look, that's all I need the, to know. This is the picture I got. All I can tell you is that's a big, steep curve. Yeah. For those like, of you who are not watching, right. I'm showing a picture that Peter Bolden sent me. And I just see, I read charts up and steep right. I'm in. Chocolate cake. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Just being <laughs> real, guys. That's uh, true. No, we won't be talking to your neighboring dentist. So there you go. All right, I appreciate <laughs> there that. You go. Uh, I'm going to cool. mute myself because I've had too much coffee here. <laughs> so, so we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And again, it all ties in because exactly what you were talking about, Dr. Bolden, before I jump into the three major things here, is we're nurturers by nature. Like, I mean, the profession in and of itself, dentist, is nurturing by nature. You are taking care of other people. And a lot of times when that happens, it, combined with everything else you said, it literally sets it up for Oh, okay, you're going to take care of me. And then bam, you know, that whole thing that you just explained of how the cycle tends to go. There's so many people that we've bumped into in this industry that 
we've gone anywhere from my they didn't want to do anything to they literally hijacked my site. And hijack my site, meaning the the, the, do, the the dentist or the doctor or the individuals thought they owned the site, and they come to find out they don't own the domain, they don't own the hosting, they don't own the platform, and they try to leave, and they're like, oh, sure, you can leave. You just pay me $50,000. So, yeah, we've had that yeah. experience, actually, where people weaponize the the website construction, the, the hey, I didn't register my own domain. Uh, Our buddy Trey. We've had that in multiple masterminders. I, I would say we've had that in four or five things. One had to get legal. And so this is this is exactly what I was alluding to mm -hmm. in the beginning, where that is criminal, A. It is, by the way. I know you use that word, and that's not a euphemism, because it is criminal because you paid for it only mm -hmm. to find out you don't own it. And our buddy, who we can't mention his name because it got legal, he is not allowed as per the legal agreement to share the company or what they did. Yeah. So there's no See? buyer beware. Like there's no Yelp review. Hey guys, yeah. FYI, I paid 30 grand. and got totally hosed. So that's why this yeah. podcast is important. And so as we go through this process, I mean, you got that. And then on top of that, you got the SEO game. You got the ongoing changing the, the rules, yes. everything going. Because things that you mentioned, for example, the black hat stuff, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, that wasn't black hat. It was, here's how you do it. Put a lot of keywords into your page and you will rank high. Like, okay, keyword great. stuffing, right? So you, now, now, it's, now it's keyword stuffing. You're like, oh, you used to do that stuff. Well, it wasn't bad then. That's what you told us the game was. Then he said, okay, you know, just whoever, whoever has the most links. All right. Well, then everybody goes, let's build a bunch of links. Let's yeah, they go to Fiverr. Links. They go to Fiverr, exactly. buy a bunch of low quality links. And all of a sudden, wow, I'm ranking good. This yeah. is crazy. It's awesome. And we're all white hat, just a bunch of links. And then you come and Google says, no, now that's black hat. So Google has played this out. And I'm, I'm getting to something because one of the main points that we talk, that we'll talk about is AI. AI has its own pattern. Google has already displayed the pattern, how they tend to do things. And we're going to definitely talk about though, anybody who's using AI. If you're using it incorrectly, you're, it, the cycle is the, the, the writing is on the wall. Mm -hmm. It will happen. It's just a matter of when. It's not if. It's a matter you're of when. You're saying it's the next algorithm update that will penalize you for taking the easy button. Exactly. Right? And well, whether it. it's the next one or the, or the third one or the fourth one, they're giving it. They've expressed very clearly, we're going to let you play. We're going to let you do what you want to do. Break. Try to break the rules. And then we're going to come back and go, thank you for telling us all the black hat stuff. Now we'll consider that black hat and you're going to go down. Now, those who, do, who, those who understand that and take a different path of seeing the bigger vision, how can I do this right the first time? Mm -hmm. Those individuals are the ones that are going to come out on top. Those are the ones that will continue to see those spikes. They may see a slight drop as it adjusts, but then after that, it comes back and it comes back even stronger. Yep. So let's get into the three things. Yep. Exactly what you wanted Let's to go. talk about. Let's go. There's going to be three. And, and, and I want to set it up so that you can actually, as you go, you can ask questions if you feel like there's something in there that needs to be clarified a little bit more. And as we get into the weeds, I just like to reserve a little bit towards the end to bring it back to say, okay, let's bring this back to simple. Okay, so because, I'm going to uh, tune out. Craig's until eating that, cake. Yeah, so right. we're good. Yeah. Eating cake. It'll be me and okay, you. So, exactly. And so we want to do a hand signal because I'm like going to check email <laughs> and then just say, okay, and here's yeah. how you take the chocolate cake. <laughs> you put it in your mouth. Right. Let's see how much chocolate cake I can give you in each bite. How's that? And then no, that no, way, no, I, I just, when the, the cake is ready, I'll be next door watching TV. When this crap is ready, I want to eat the cake. Zach, so, you and me, let's go to a separate Zoom room. Yeah, man. Okay. All right, go yeah, get into it. Let's get go. into it's, it. Step you know, one. Like, why, why do I do? Why? Why do we even pay attention to this? Because honestly, at the end of the day, it's you are either gonna be with the curve of growth here, or you're not. Plain and simple, yes. you're either gonna yes. be doing the right things to get there, or you are going to be left behind. Period. By your competition. You're saying. By your competition, exactly. Yes. yes. So it's like one of the one of the first points that we're gonna talk about is. Why can use the, how can user experience be your secret weapon for SEO? And it's all going to tie back in because you're going, okay, well, we have somebody is trying to search something. It's trying to search for a dentist, trying to look for veneers, trying to look for a, 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 an emergency procedure, something of the sort that would be helpful. And this theme will come back around multiple times as we go through this. It's saying, how is my experience as the searcher? Mm -hmm. As a person who needs something, 
help how, how is you how is your site helping me get there quickly cuz i need that and i need that information and i need to know that now there's a natural cycle and this is where it's very interesting because it starts right at the beginning having an understanding from someone one of the things that we didn't talk about is besides the seo experience that we have we've been fortunate and unfortunate at the same time to have a marketing experience because we've tried a bunch of different things that has given us the opportunity to go hmm we try well, let's 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 try to rank these keywords sure they were there were keywords that we managed to rank but they did nothing mm. you're like well, what happened we didn't understand at that point in the early cycles the importance of the marketing cycle or the buying cycle. Somebody comes in and says, what, uh, what is a wisdom tooth? Okay, well, okay. They're, they're looking for general information. Maybe it's a high school kid doing a project for that. Ooh, I ranked really high on that. So okay, you're saying cool. that's not a buying query that's is what not. is a wisdom tooth? You're looking that's, for that's specific an informational, right? conversions, a, conversions but, rather. But yeah. having the understanding that that, where, where is that? What's the intent behind that? Because that guides the user experience. Mm. Like I'm saying, going a high school kid. I'm helping, I'm helping a high school kid understand what a wisdom tooth is. Okay, cool. But that's not my client. Mm. Somebody comes. So that, that's that's the general informational one. Then there's the one that somebody that has a problem. I think I have a cavity. I have this little thing. I don't know. Is this a cavity? They're starting to realize that they have a problem. So having that understanding that you're having a problem, but it may not be serious enough that it, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't hurt. So then I don't need to really, I'm not too worried about it. Their, their drive to do something about it right now isn't quite there. But if we put information in front of that individual that nudges them a little bit, if you let a cavity keep going, what happens? Will you lose your tooth? <gasps> Wait, I might lose my tooth? Now the intent changed. It went from what is a cavity to do I have one? What's the problem? And those are more serious. So it's qualifying the user intent by, by right. taking it broad and then going narrow into conversion. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So if somebody goes, hey, let me, let me try to rank for Invisalign. You're like, okay, awesome. You're competing against the big, big names, big money, big money. They have a lot of resources, so on and so forth. It's a one word keyword. If you start expanding that out, to other keywords, where's a, uh, where can I get Invisalign near me? That is a lot much closer to that buying cycle. That person now says, I know I have a problem. I'm looking for a solution and I need somebody that's near me. So let me break this down for the people listening, Leo, just so we can get back to, Craig, I, I will talk to someone eating chocolate cake. What you're saying is I'm the user, a potential patient. I log on, I just type in Invisalign in the Google search box. You're saying, well, that's very competitive. That's a single word to try to rank for. Now, if what we want is greater specificity, meaning best Invisalign provider, Delray Beach, right? Mm -hmm. That's where someone is actively seeking a provider in that area. And that's where that, it's called a long tail keyword. Correct. That's where, where you can really start ranking competitively because, is that what you're saying? Yes. And, Got and, it. and. On that, it's going to tie very closely to that second part with when we're going to talk about AI and how mm -hmm. that plays into it. Because in the past, the, the, the sweet spot for a keyword was between three to six words. That was the sweet mm -hmm. spot. And it still is. It still has a lot of value. In the to search that. phrase, you're saying? Correct. Okay. Uh, Invisalign near me. Mm hmm. Period. There it is. Like, that's a very clear intent. I want Invisalign, I want somebody near me doctor that does Invisalign near me. That's probably seven, I think. Just went outside of that realm. But it's right there. That's much closer to it. That intent, when you have that clarity, it makes it much, much stronger. So summarize number one for me in, in a sentence. Like what, is, what does someone need to know about all the aforementioned? There's going to be a recurring theme. What is your, your searcher, your prospect searching for? And what's their intent? Okay. So fictitiously, I do this a lot and I want to know if this is a best practice. Craig, you, I bet you probably have done this from time to time. You will open up a browser and you will search how you rank yourself. The problem a lot of people forget to do is Google already knows your activity. They knows you've gone to your own website a number of times and it's saying, Hey, well, I'm not going to show you that because it's you. 
So if you're going to do that and test your results, make sure you're going to, to Google Chrome and opening an incognito browser, right? Because that's going to wipe away all your cookies and tracking and all that stuff. So at least it gives you a, 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 a true representation of how someone would uh, show up in your geographic area. And you right? touch because you're searching probably from your own geographic area. Did I say that correctly? You absolutely did. And I'm going to take it one additional thing to it. Okay. And especially because we talked about how you get preyed upon. There are two different kinds of tools. There's the tools that are from outside somebody looking at your site and trying to get an estimate of what your traffic is. They're estimation tools. They can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Ahrefs, SEMrush, you know, Uber suggests a bunch of different tools. They are not your traffic necessarily. When you get down to it, where the, your traffic is your, in your Google Search Console and Google Analytics, because that's actual traffic that happens. So when somebody is sharing with you, hey, you know, this is where you're ranking, this is where you are, then you're like, okay, great. That's, uh, that sounds awesome. Let me go take a look. And you do exactly what Dr. Bolden just talked about. He said, go to your incognito window, search it, and see if you do come up there. Because those tools tend to be off. And they're snapshots. They're snapshots of data. So, yes, you had it right on. Get that. And now, you know, we can hop, if you, if you want to, we can hop into that second point, which ties very Let's well go. with exactly. So the second point is, you know, why is AI a key to unlocking your search engine results? AI is here to stay. Love it. Hate it. Uh, either way, <laughs> if you're not with it, <laughs> you're going to be The toothpaste is out. not going back in the bottle. Is that what you're it saying? It is not going back in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Try to pull that baby back in. Good luck. It is there. Google has said, absolutely, this is important enough because we are now, we now feel the threat. I mean, just think about it. Anybody who has touched something like chat GPT. Right. Uh, what should I be looking for in a dentist? You know, they're like, these are the points. It gives it to you, lays it out. Write me a, an essay on this, on dentistry, blah, blah, blah. You know, anything that you have, they are looking for that. And it's taking a piece of what Google has so has actually commandeered for so many years. And it's all over the place. So what you don't want to do if you're listening to this is saying, hey, chat GPT, write me an article on what is a wisdom tooth for your website. And then you hit copy, paste, post. Right. With, exactly. So you've basically had hu zero human touch, which is easily detected in the next algorithm update, which potentially, as we've alluded to before, could easily penalize you. So it could be two steps forward and seven steps back is what it could look like. Exactly. Um, so I just want to I'm just trying to kind of relay this to people. So the tactical so that people could understand like, oh, OK, I see what you're talking about. Put it this way. You do it. If it's so if it's that easy for you to do, right. everybody else is doing it. Right. Right. And you're but there is, it. but there is Leo a place for it, meaning Absolutely. it is a tool and it is Absolutely. being encouraged to being used, but it is a tool for curation, not for completion. Correct. And yeah. that's precisely where you, I, I, myself and Zach and everything that we do, we know we, we use AI as well in different components of what we do, mm -hmm. but we definitely, we've warning from day one to our clients saying, Hey, do not just copy paste because that's the first thing it goes to. Oh, here's my yes, keyword. Yeah. Write me an article for. Let me throw it in there, and I got an article. I don't need to get a content person because it reads really well. Um, yeah, it doesn't, and it gets facts wrong. Which, by the way, if you just throw something up there and you're not even at least fact checking, <laughs> you, I mean, you know better than I do. But for <laughs> my instance, you guys have actually used AI. Obviously, you have a pr approach where you're leveraging technology convenience. Because let me pause for a second. In the past, people have been like, hey, busy Dr. Bolden, dentist, doing all the things. I need you to write an article for me because I'm not a dentist on dental bonding versus veneers. Can you spit that out for me so that I can post it to your website? And I'm like, yeah. Even me, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, let me get to that. Six months later, I still haven't done it. P.S. We're never going to do that, mm -hmm. right? And so, <laughs> so that's where ChatGPT has come in, and you're saying, but I would look at something and say, hey, this article is great. Let's change this. Let's do that. Let's add this word. Let's delete this one. Let me add my flavor to it, and boom, right Rewrite, now, we're, now we're cooking. Adding, right, rewrites, mm -hmm. adding, leveraging your knowledge, your your what you are able you are able to do beyond what. ChatGPT would immediately know, 
Right. That part is powerful. Yep. Okay. And there's multiple ways of doing that. But the, the, the point of it is if you're just using it and you're taking the easy button out, then it's fine. You, you, you may see some success initially. You will see this because this is the, for the period of time that Google is saying, okay, I see what they're doing. I want to give a now. nugget to our listeners. You know, so look up something. If you're hearing this and you still want to use it, at least run your results and what you've created through something called Quillbot. Is that still uh, pretty pretty prevalent, guys? Quillbot's a good, it's a good one. Yep. Okay. And that would be, and that's, it helps uh, re, so rephrase the things a bit. Well, like, or one, one just thing, analyze. One suggestion, though, couldn't you hmm. make your own like flux capacitor and do the wiring <laughs> diagram with the diode to do just this? Just ignore him, y'all. He's <laughs> well, what, he guys? Exactly. I mean, well, that, that's how you make well, chocolate. Right, right. <laughs> are we? Are, can I eat the cake yet, or should I just yeah, go well, to dental? Hold on, hold on. We're This is important. <laughs> okay, great. Make there's me a lot of technical dentists. It. There's Put a lot of technical way. dentists. Do Greg. me a favor. Yeah. If you're in the comments watching this, just say, give me the cake or help me make the cake. I want to do a tally. And <laughs> well, if the cake is easy, it, bud. It's dentalseoboost.com. I That's know, but I just, want, I just want to take a pulse on our listeners. Oh, Get gosh. on and make a comment. And I, maybe you win, Peter. Maybe you <laughs> right. win. The person with the most liked comments, I will send them a frozen Settle chocolate down, cake. Boomer. All right, Boomer. Well, here's the chocolate. For example, there's a, there's a client that we're working with who uh, you know, had content that was pre-written by another company. And we're going, wow, they're getting content that's written by another company. That's cool. That's, that's a great deal. You're actually getting that done. Come to find out that if I did something as simple as this, if you ever wonder if your content is original or not, go to Google, put a little quotation mark, copy a certain part of your text, paste it in the search, close the quotation, and hit search. Mm. As soon as you do that, if it shows up anywhere else in bold, that mm -hmm. means other pages are using it. Oh, wait, wait. I, ha I have something thing. relevant now. No more no, joking. No, no more joking. It. No more mm -hmm. joking. So listen, I had a guy, um, um, kind of a jackass. I'm going to call him out, unfortunately. Uh, he pirated my website, local guy. Ugh. Literally every single word on the homepage. Just changed oh. the name. Like built on the passion and promise. And I mean, everything. And I called him like, dude, what are you doing? It's hurting both of us. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're both going down. We're both losing together. Like, oh, I have no idea how that happened. And then it kept happening and happening and happening. My logo, everything. But can you, <laughs> literally it was crazy. You might be getting a call like from Zach him, not knowing. It's like Zach oh, yeah. not knowing how, we, how kids came to be. I'm exactly. putting it in the chat just so you know who to, to avoid this guy. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's like, isn't that crazy that, um, I mean, why would people do that? That's not a good thing, play. Though, here, here, yeah, it is not a good play. And here's the other thing that they didn't know and they probably won't know, is that when you have something like that, the first to market, first person, first one that gets picked up through Google, it's the one that is going to give it more value because that, it recognizes that it's the original the authority. creator of it. Got it. And that comes into play sometimes even with YouTube. You're going, well, as soon as you put up a YouTube video up, you know, that gets transcribed. Google says, okay, this is now content. And if you throw that, throw that into your site, it'll still give it credit, but it probably not quite as much. This is where AI could come into play. You just took your, your transcript. You say, hey, ChatGPT, can you rewrite this in an original format that speaks in my voice? And then give it somewhat of your voice that so that would be. And then they're like, it's an original article. It's yours. It's beautifully written. Put that up on your website. Bam. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I that's think, what happens. Yeah, one of the biggest things with AI, it's the first step that Leo mentioned, the Google user experience, right? So like, even if you're using these AI tools to help you generate content, ask yourself after you've read it, is this going to give the user a good experience? Are you the expert? Yeah. Are you the authority? Can you be trusted? Because if the answer is yes to that, Google loves that. It's unique. Because remember, Google's goal is to make a lot of money. And the more users who come to their platform and have a good experience through their search results, they're going to keep coming back. But if they go and find your generic AI-generated crap that doesn't provide any value, that's why people are going to be getting penalized from using AI. That's a good point, Zach. Zooming up from, from, yeah, zoom up a level to see if it makes sense from, from a strategy level, mm -hmm. right? Um, does it provide value? Yes or no? <laughs> and you've hit, okay. you've hit on a perfect, perfect word right now. Yeah, that's a perfect segue of something that I got to share because this is, again, another nugget to be able to protect your, uh, the industry. Okay. There's strategic marketing and there's tactical marketing. Let me just go very quick distinction of the two. Yeah, quick, because Craig's come hungry. Up to somebody, if you come up to some, somebody comes up to you, hey, I can, I can build you a million links. I can, I, I can create a bunch of content for you. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I can um, fix all your titles and descriptions. Okay, those are tactical. They're doing one thing. Mm-hmm. It has no tie to anything else. Strategic is how does my keyword tie to my title, tie to my description, tie to my links, my internal links, the outside links. How does my podcast tie into that? How does all that come together? Because now you're working synergistically mm-hmm. to create an amazing result. And that, my friends, is an edge. That will put you ahead of the competition. Leo, can I introduce a third access to this as well? Please. There's also beautiful marketing, which actually is the most common. So to pe- speaking to Peter's experience, and again, it all worked out well, he created a beautiful website that just wasn't functioning. So mm-hmm. for us dentists, there's three axes, strategic, tactical, and just pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Most of us are wowed by the pretty and the advertising world rewards them. I I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a TV campaign and and a print campaign. And I actually won an award called an Addy. I won an advertiser's award. Oh, really? You won one of those? Yeah, we we won an Addy. My advertising agency won the Addy, which is a a, a, a loose site plaque somewhere in my office that cost me $400,000. Imagine what type of one I could have designed on Etsy or Alibaba. Peter could have got me a life-size monument. I got you a life-size. He would have had me a bronze statue in my parking lot. Statue of lot. Craig. Yeah. For yeah, $7. But dollars but for delivered. $7. So the point I'm trying to make is while you guys are experts and you understand strategic versus tactical, the average listener just understands beautiful. And beautiful mm-hmm. does not translate into the phone ringing. So we think as, as lay people, it should be cosmetically gorgeous and we don't think about the functionality of it. The goal of all advertising is to amplify your message and get the damn phone to ring. Full stop. Exactly. Full yeah, stop. And, and it's perfect because there's, a, there's four metrics that we talk about consistently. You have more eyes on what you're put, putting out there. Two, are people getting there? Are they clicking over to your site? Mm-hmm. Three, are they actually calling? Are they, is, are they filling out a form? Are they, are they taking the action that you asked them to take? And number four, which is the most important one, are they buying? Are they coming in for service? Those are the four metrics to look at. And when you're going through it, if you don't, if you don't look at it from that perspective, then it, it's somewhere in there, it falls apart. And that's why the strategic part of it, when, when clients come to us and say, hey, I want to rank for this keyword. I'm like, absolutely. But where are, you, where are you standing right now? I have nowhere to be seen. And I'm like, well, the probability of that is going to take a little while to get there, maybe six months to get there. But they say, hey, you know, there's this keyword that's very close to that, and you're already ranking, but you're on page three. What if we push that to page one? Oh, we can do that? Yes, it already has momentum. It's a very simple principle. That which has momentum continues that momentum. Mm. All right, let's get to three so so we can keep Craig's attention. I'm really nervous about his attention. (laughs) Don't worry about me. I have a couple little one-liners that will zing in there. Yeah. So the last one, and, and this is it, it's why... Mastering topical relevance is a huge component to skyrocket your results. Why your mastering top- topical relevance? Now, what the heck is topical relevance? What is relevance, that? What are you Leo? talking about? What are you talking about? I've lost the chocolate, chocolate, and chocolate ears. Okay, what does your user want? <laughs> How quickly can you get them there? Okay, that's it in a nutshell. There is, if you, if you want to break it down, if you want chocolate, a smaller chocolate size bite, time to value. Write that down. Time to value. How much time does it take me as the searcher to get to the valuable part of what I need? What you need, right. Period. And is there enough in there to answer the questions that I might have? And in that process, once you have me down, something as simple as you got me. Like, you know, you had me at hello, you had me at chocolate, you had me at whatever, put the buy button right there, call button right there. All right. So, so that's great. I completely agree with that. And this is going to tie into what I'm going to say so many times. So as you guys know, we coach a lot of dentists across the nation. We've, you know, through four masterminds or five masterminds we've had now, we have summits and conferences. And so we get asked the technical questions like this. And a lot of people will say, Hey, I'm going to up my marketing. They'll say this to me. I'm going to up my marketing only to find out that what that means is I'm just going to throw more money at ads 
only to arrive at the same shitty website that I've had for, for seven years, because I think that it's a magical bucket. If I throw $1 in, I get four back. And so what you're saying, Leo, is, is, is that it's a global approach. It's not just how you show up, but it's also how you convert. What's the experience like when they land on your page, right? Is it, is it a copied paragraph? If you're trying to, I've seen dentists, for example, say, I want to focus on doing more veneers. And I go to their veneer page on their website and it's a paragraph, they're paying for expensive traffic there. It's one paragraph without any pictures. And I'm like, how is this convincing at all? You literally might as well just light your money on fire. I and so here's why I like, my approach recently has been, I mean, I do a, a big ad spend, but I'm also doing a lot more approach with SEO with you guys because SEO is accretive over time, meaning that it's equitable for your domain. You own your domain, estate. hopefully. It's real estate. You're building another floor on your on your skyscraper versus versus paid ads, which is a very good technique to get eyeballs, but you're renting the floor in which you put on top of your building, Great right? Analogy. It doesn't add, it doesn't add another floor. You're renting it. And as soon as you, as soon as that's gone, that floor is gone as well. But SEO builds your skyscraper over time, right? Through something called page rank. And so that's been a little bit of a mind shift for me lately, but I think, and I want my, honestly, my approach in my practice is to be a bifurcated model of about half and half. Quite honestly, half of my dollars in marketing going towards SEO because it's a creative and half going towards paid ads uh, through YouTube and Instagram and all the things. So I think that was a great, I think that's a great segue. Leo, I wanted to preserve some time thing, Just give me for second, you. You, you said something, save some time at the yeah. end. Did Craig, we, we the can... cake's almost ready, Craig. Yeah, I know. One, one other thing too, Leo, and then I'll let you speak. And I, I, this is unfair and you guys have to deal with this. So you, you mentioned they want to do more veneers. Their webpage doesn't have veneers. Add another layer on that. Leo, Zach, you help people. They go to dentalseoboost.com. They sign up. You do an amazing job. And then you call that doctor. I saw the veneers. I want to get scheduled. The person says, Dr. Sanchez doesn't do veneers on the phone. Mm -hmm. So you guys can do everything in your power oh, yeah. to get the phone to ring. Yeah. And you guys can be harshly judged. I use those guys and they didn't get anything it didn't done. Work. It didn't work. Right. Because the, the <laughs> ultimate thing, every step along is a patient decision tree. You get the exposure, you go to the website, you get social credibility, you finally in, feel inspired to call, and then you wind up, you know, dropping the ball at the office level, or they make you wait for three hours and you're in the reception area. So unfortunately, you guys get great credit with working with clients who actually do the right work and you get uh -huh. vicarious negative feedback when they don't. Uh, well and I, said. I apologize for our- No, no that's a no, great, no, that's because great. Actually, it's excellent. And part of what you were talking about, it's literally the last little portion of what you were going to lead into. It's like, what do, so what do we do? What do we right. do? How do we get this? And ultimately at the end of the end that we have what's called, what we call this a triple threat. And, and I'm going to tie all of it back in as the, what you just, what you shared, Dr. Dr. Sport at the beginning, that you're you up and to the right, you know we 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 mentioned it at the beginning. If your site is not speaking properly to the search engines, they cannot understand what you're doing. You can try every single keyword, but it ain't gonna work because it doesn't understand what you're trying to do. Once you fix that part, it takes care of a good third of what needed to be taken care of. Then comes the strategic part of it, but the strategic part, where do you base that off of? You know, off of estimation tools or off of something that's actual real data. Part of what you just talked about, uh, Dr. Bolden, is you 50% uh, paid ad, 50% of SEO. That data that you're getting from paid ads is telling you people yes. are clicking on this. Correct. Well, let's go after that keyword. Yes. Let's go after that because now I know for a fact, without a question, that that data is real. It's not an estimate. It's real. I can base decisions off of that. Uh, to to share with you our experience, like that, when we actually talk to people, when we talk to individuals, and it's actually not that surprising because we don't base it on we think this is going to work. We base it on this is what the data is telling us. Mm -hmm. And tie in, combine it with your expertise. Yes, I know that's what my data is telling me. We had a client who is in the dental industry that was ranking really high for water bottles. Like, Great. What? They're not in the that's water awesome bottle. It's awesome for a water bottle, but it had nothing to do with the way you're trying to do. Yeah. So what do we have? We had a guy who, a long time ago, who uh, had to do with pizza, and he didn't have a single, in this page, not a single time did he have the word pizza in the site. 
I'm like, yeah, like Bolden's ranking high for most eligible Atlanta bachelor. Gotcha. He's not even a bachelor. Exactly. There he is. He's not even that <laughs> well, eligible. That, that was circa 2002. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It still has page rank. <laughs> I think I have the loose side track. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so, so let's wrap it up with this. this what, what can I do? It's a triple threat. It's first, make sure your site is working properly. Two is making sure that you have to actu actually have a strategic versus a tactical plan that you implement. And then from there, make sure that you're using real data to actually help you reach those decisions along with your expertise. Now, mm -hmm. it sounds easy to say, and that's the part that you're like, okay, it sounds simple. Yes, I love it. How do you do that? That's where the team and the support of who you have can help you maneuver through that to go, okay, which, what am I, what are we focusing on and why, I'll start with this, why am I focusing on that? How are we going to approach it? Now, what are we going to do about it? If you've ever heard Simon Sinek's Golden Circle, if you haven't, I would say go listen to that. That's exactly how the, the biggest companies that have ever succeeded and, and in many different areas have done it. Why? Google wanted the simplest way to be able for people to get to what they needed to get to. It is one search bar. Compared to everybody else, they've blown everybody out of the water. Apple wanted to be the best one. They have the simplest phone to use. Whether you like iPhones or not, whatever, that's the fact is, it's there. And they stay ahead of the curve. So you, you try to catch up, they're six months ahead or a year mm -hmm. ahead. And this, the strategic part of it is what helps them stay ahead. How do we do that? We help simplify that process for anybody that we work with. So I guess in closing too, I would also recommend, and I recommended this to the mastermind is that, you know, I think one of the first steps, if you're not using Google analytics is, is watch a 30 minute video on Google analytics, get your site hooked up, understand how traffic flows in and out of your site, where things are coming from. I think, you know, I really like it when dentists arm themselves with knowledge because I think then it moves you out of a position of being vulnerable to operating from a strength position of like saying like, hey, I see that all my inbound traffic, just having a 30 minute education on that platform, I think would speak volumes. And honestly, you guys would probably prefer a client who has some level of acumen because Absolutely. then you can say, oh, cool, we can move to level 2.0 and 3.0 versus, oh shit. Kind of thing. Let me, if, I, if I may, I would just want Please. to jump in on one thing because there would be a second video that I would say, and actually I would put that one prior to Google Analytics. Google Analytics and Google Search Console are two different tools. Mm -hmm. They're both from Google. They're both very powerful. Google Search Console addresses the first two. More eyes on the site and click-through rate. Okay. Google, once they've clicked through, now we're getting into Google Analytics. What are they doing on your site? How long are they hanging out? Yes. What are the period they're standing for? That is how the four fit in. Okay. So Google Search Console first. Then, and that's pretty, it's, it really breaks down to two, two things. Impressions, that's how many eyes are on the site. Clicks, how many people are clicking to your site. Then, now, okay, what are, when they're there, what are they doing? And if you, are, if you, have, if you have a form, um, are you tracking the forms? If you're having phone calls, are you getting the phone calls? And are right, you tracking, are you tracking that? Right, right. Yeah, so it's part of the whole life cycle of patient, you know, from prospective patient to finished treatment, right? This is part of what we talk about in our whole kind of bulletproof life cycle of like, mm -hmm. it's the whole process. It's not, you don't look at it independent as a silo. It's one contiguous um, process. And so I love, I love that you guys are doing it. I, I want to say right, one thing real quick. All right, um, Craig, you, you know, can so, wrap it. So no, I just want to say one thing that's important because, um, you know, as a business owner, I've got 12 doctors and 50 some odd team and they strap, they hitch their wagon to us business owners. And we have mm -hmm. an onus responsibility to just make the business work. They do the dentistry. They're dedicated to the patient care. Peter and I have transitioned. And part of the in, implied responsibility of a business owner is make this thing successful. And without a powerful SEO strategy, you're limping along. And I feel that. I stuck my head in the sand. You guys saw my results. We did a conversion a long time ago, too long to admit publicly. And I've just chose to say, you know, I can't make this better. And with the little data that I have with working with you guys and seeing that graph move up to the right, I am incredibly thankful for you, for you guys because you're impacting those families that have hitched their wagon, those people. I mean, if I have 50 people, how many people depend on an organization? 100, mm -hmm. 150? If they're all Zacks, Easy. it's 500. Easy. Because then, you know, if all my, you know, if we had, if we had 50 Zacks, it's 1,000 people. Zacks kids. But I'm just Excellent. saying that, like, these doctors depend on me. And I don't have the 
diligence and understanding. So I depend on you guys and I'm thankful for what you've done. And if this continues, which I'm sure it will, holy smokes, it'll be incredible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, I'm a paying customer and I'm so You're thankful welcome. for you guys. And I know yeah, I'm sarcastic. And thank you but... for the opportunity. And on that part of it, it's just, here's, I would simplify one little point and then I'm done, which is uh, precisely what Dr. Bolden was talking about. Just empowering, empowering yourself with just enough knowledge to be able to make some good decisions. Mm -hmm. That's about the level of what you should have, you should have to do. From there is when you're actually speaking, one of the things that we do is we focus on, empower, on helping the client understand why something is being done. Not necessarily that they have to get into the weeds, but if we come into alignment with that, because you are the experts in your field and we are the experts in ours. And when you combine those two, the, the results are exponentially stronger than if you try to do it all on your own. So that, thank you very much for. Yeah. I yeah, awesome. appreciate it guys. Yeah. Appreciate it guys. Uh, Zach, anything in closing or, or yeah. but... well, I, I like to keep it simple, right? I'm the guy with nine kids. So, <laughs> you know, we, we really got into the weeds on some of this stuff, but really, if you just go to dental boost.com, you can book a call with us. There's no obligation. It's a free consultation. We'll just help you see where your site's at. And if we think we can help you create results again, and we'll educate you, we'll answer any questions you may have regarding SEO. There's no obligation to do anything, but uh, I'd highly encourage you to That's do that. That's awesome. And That's not, awesome to, that. and not to create that. any false urgency here, because I want to be very clear on this part of it, because we started with this, I want to end with this part of it, is we, we truly honor those individuals that are cynical and radio. So let's get, let's get moving. Let's get this thing rolling. And one of the things that you talk about, uh, Dutch Spodek is, you know, are you going to be working with my neighbor? I said, no, we, we, we select who we actually work with to make sure that there is, we don't, there is no conflict of interest that we actually able to help in as many communities as we can, but without creating any kind of friction with that. So, you know, when you speak with Zach, cause he's usually the front end side of things, then you have to, when you decide to work together, then we come together and you get to transfer over to me. So there you go. Uh Awesome guys. Loved it guys. That was I awesome. I'll put, I'll put the uh, website in the show notes and I uh, appreciate what you guys do. And thank you for, uh, thank you for bailing Craig and I out of the, the, the trenches. Seriously, appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. And, and enjoy your, enjoy your chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving guys. I'll just talk. Thank you guys. Me, man. Thanks. Cool. See you guys. Take care.